Hi, I'm Ben Hickey, Curator of Exhibitions at the Hilliard Art Museum. Welcome to the exhibition, LaShawn Moore, 17845. LaShawn Moore, 17845, is a contemplative exploration of the artist's family history and relationship to agriculture. Moore's worldview and artistic practice is informed by being a black woman whose family inspired her love of agriculture. Her affinity for growing things flips supposed urban stereotypes on their ears and takes on the painful agricultural legacy of enslavement, the Jim Crow South from which her grandfather fled, and a litany of injustices that continue today. Her grandfather's dedication to gardening represents one important way in which Moore's family tree influences her work. The title of her exhibition, 17845, is a reference to her grandfather's nursing home identification number a number that adorns Moore's most beloved keepsake, a t-shirt on view in the exhibition. The visual appearance of this exhibition is directly tied to the healing that takes place when the roots and current ramifications of racism are discussed. Moore prefers to express the breadth of her family history in the confines of one gallery by dreamlike surreal means. Most dramatically and pointedly, the cotton jackets suspended from the center of the ceiling cast irregular shadows. They have a presence like anthropomorphic clouds referencing the heavens, indicating Moore's ancestors are always close by. This idea is echoed literally and figuratively by audio recordings of family interviews playing in the space. Just the idea of blackness. Like if if someone were to say, Grandma Joe, mm -hmm. what is black? What what would your response be? That dress I had in there. <laughs> <laughs> the funeral dress. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So what is what does it mean to be black? Well, Sean, I'm not unhappy with my color. I don't, you can label it African American. You can label it black. You can label it Negro, which a lot of people do all of these things, but I'm not unhappy with my color. And I, as a black American woman, am working with cotton in every garment that I make because it's almost impossible not to. And it's also, aside from my farming practice, just a choice. I love the suppleness, the softness, and the beauty of cotton. But I'm not addressing this history. And then when I started to address the history, I got a lot of feedback and there was a lot of pushing and and tugging and I wasn't sure if I should keep going or if I should keep learning or if I should have this conversation or even if it was appropriate for me to do this work and I think that curiosity has led me to this space. Additionally, each garment represents a labor of love. Moore made them as a way of honoring her family's past and continues to grow cotton, indigo sourced from lowland plantations near her South Carolina home, and a variety of other crops. She does this as a way to give herself agency over economic systems and agriculture that were and are oppressive to black and indigenous farmers. A sense of healing and growth also present themselves in a more recognizably surrealist or Afro-surrealist manner that can best be described as Toni Morrison meets Salvador Dali. For example, sitting on organically shaped shelves and pedestals, as well as an unassuming table, are tinctures and family heirlooms. It is as though one can walk into a dream and find a talisman that can provide protection or a tincture of cotton bark that can heal the body and spirit. Moore created the vials of tincture using ancestral plant knowledge, which would have been familiar to enslaved people in the Carolinas. The presence of moss growing out of casements and walls in the gallery adds to the sense that this is a sedate chamber of memories, undisturbed by time. 
It is an intimate healing space rooted in Moore's personal history. The art historical lineage from which LaShawn Moore's art emerges is tied to ideas expressed by many artists. Some of the best examples include Betty Saar and Marcel Duchamp for their use of everyday, mass-produced objects. But Saar is more important here because she criticized racism within her practice. Imagery and ideas that are undeniably Southern are also present in Moore's oeuvre. The artist Greeley Myatt's practice is steeped in what is called the Southern vernacular, but Rodney McMillan, who has roots in South Carolina like Moore, does the same and creates immersive spaces like recreations of country churches as he explores race and gender from an African-American perspective. Moore's emphasis on sustainable, equitable farming practices further aligns her with the burgeoning field of sustainable art. Many of these artists are engaged in farming practices similar to Moore's. Artists of this variety pursue life holistically and view what they do as being deeply tied to social and environmental justice.